Neighbors, we have a new segment called Neighborhood Watch, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. All right. <laughs> hey, neighbors. So we are introducing a new segment called Neighborhood Watch, where we not only, you know, we like to give you guys the technical side of the beauty industry, but we also want to talk about some issues that are going on within the beauty industry as well. And we would love to get your opinion. But first, we're gonna have a roundtable discussion. Now, recently, it, it, it's not super recent, but maybe what was it, a what year or two. Year? Yeah, yeah, a year or two ago, um, Shea Moisture sewed sold <laughs> they sold their company to a larger conglomerate um and shea moisture was a black owned company um we love buying black supporting black businesses however they sold and this is something that seems to be a common trend within the black community and black products once they you know really get a buzz and really start going and really start making some money and get a really good support system behind them they sell mm -hmm. so what are your opinions on this well, it wasn't only Shea Moisture too. It was um, Sundial Brands, okay. which is the the parent brand. So Shea Moisture is underneath, as well as um, Madam C J Walker line, mm -hmm. um, Nyako line, and um, I think it's one more line underneath. I can't think of the top of my head. So it's the whole Sundial Brands, which um, Rich Lou Dennis started, that sold to Unilever, which is one of the biggest beauty conglomerates. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just. We've had this talk, Travis and I, we have this talk about um, how black businesses, once they reach a certain um, amount of money or once they reach, I think, their highest, they sell to a bigger beauty brand. And um, while they might see that, uh, see it as like a better business move, I think kind of like it's, uh, well, what about the black community that was supporting you? You know, we wanted to, uh, I guess, hold down our own we want to you know reach up our own and this was the whole purpose of, of, of us being behind your back and then you sell it to like a bigger conglomerate that are technically not really about the people mm -hmm. they're about selling the product and pushing it out mm -hmm. you know their message is a little different than what it was before so are you really for us or are you you know kind of not for us mm -hmm. like, so he sold out kind of like out. I think he sold out, but technically it's like, well, did he really sell out? Because he also, in the moment of, you know, buy, of selling Sundown Brands, he brought SS Essence Magazine. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's for his situation, it's kind of like, well, mm -mm, did he sell out? But we're seeing this trend in a lot of big beauty, uh, mm -hmm. big beauty businesses um, that are especially targeted towards the African-American community, mm -hmm. that when they are, you know, reaching a million dollar business they're selling it to a bigger parent brand um that could potentially end the business keep it going or compromise the ingredients that are even in you know uh, the products mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Travis, what do you think well uh, it's um it's quite a difficult uh, issue yeah uh especially for the beauty supply uh operators such as myself mm -hmm. um as a korean american it's very important for us to actually support the uh, African-American brand um, we try not to enter into branding the products it's not because we don't have the out you know outlets to distribute the products but it's because we try to respect and uh, to keep the integrity of the, the African-American brand mm -hmm. when the a long time ago in about I think it's almost like 20 some odd years ago the the Revlon uh, made a public speech uh, and that angered so many African-American stylists. Uh, they said when Revlon actually entered into the African-American market, uh, they make an announcement saying that they will take over the industry in less than a few years mm. and then be predominantly uh, the, the major player in the, in the game. Mm. And then they just said that and then African-American stylists, they were pretty disappointed with the statement and uh, refusing the Revlon brand. Mm. So um, during that time, the the you know, ABAI, uh, American Her Health and Beauty AIDS Industry, I think, Association, um, ABAI was, was formed mm -hmm. and uh, the small logo was created called Proud Lady. And then we used to put that uh, Proud Lady logo on oh, the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I remember yeah. seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the uh, African American consumers would look at the bottle, and then if they see the uh, the Proud Lady logo on it, yeah. then they support the product. Right. 
So that's how you know, that's when the uh, so many uh, African American owned the brand actually really um, became a major player mm -hmm. and, and taking a significant part of the industry itself. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> soon as these companies, so the Korean Americans, you know, owned the beauty supply stores. Obviously, we supported we supported that, mm -hmm. and without you know without even a condition. Like for example, if they go to a big chain stores like you know CVS or far, you know like whatever or Green or whatever, they have conditions. Yeah, right. Like if you supply the hair it product to us, you know you, this is the condition you have to follow. This is the condition you have to follow, and all that other stuff. Right. And it really put a stress to these uh, manufacturers. Mm -hmm. But the Korean American owned beauty supply stores in supporting. We didn't give them any condition whatsoever, conditionless. Mm -hmm. you know, we, will, we will purchase the product, we will distribute the product. If the customers complain about it, we will eat up the cost right. you know, for the brand company. So that was part of it. It's like unspoken, but you know, like heart-to-heart yeah. -heart yeah. type of support that yeah. we gave. And then you know, pretty soon, one by one, uh, as Revlon said, the, you know, they want to take over the industry. They mm -hmm. did. Now there is only like everybody sold sold themselves out. Like mm -hmm. motions sold out, yeah. soft machine sold out, Carson mm -hmm. sold out, you know, ultra machine sold out. Yeah. Uh, just name any anything. It's you know, then just name anything, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'm sure it's uh, one way or the other. It's been sold out to uh, the you know four or five conglomerates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Unilever, Revlon, L'Oreal, um, and some other companies. I think. Um, so these companies actually took over literally African American brand, mm -hmm. and uh, when I'm when I'm looking at this brand, I feel kind of really sad because, like, we supposed are we supposed to leave like heritage behind mm -hmm. to our next generation so that yeah. actually our next generation can actually, uh, you know, prosper from from mm -hmm. what we have built. Right. Exactly. It's, that was part of the thing that sort of like hurt my feeling. And uh, when I saw uh, Rich Liu Dennis, which is, he's a really good guy. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I really uh, admire uh, his personality uh, and uh, his achievement as well. Mm -hmm. But selling the company out, I mean, the sheer moisture brand itself, think about it, you know, like I see young, especially millennials, fall in love with that brand, had a strong, you know, proud, yeah. some mm -hmm. sense of pride in yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. And, and then, you know, like this is something, it's not just Rich Liu's brand anymore. It's like African-American millennials brand. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's, it's a community brand itself. Yeah. And selling that out, yeah. I mean, aren't you supposed to ask, you know, your co-owners, which is the consumers? Yeah. Right. I guess, so there's a uh, documentary on PBS um, and he was featured in the documentary and he talked about his journey and mm -hmm. him uh, selling the company um, and it didn't go into a lot of detail but I guess I would like to know if he completely sold the company or if he's now a minor minority owner right. of the company. So he still has a top position for the company but yeah. he doesn't have like so he doesn't have the sole say on decision making. Mm -hmm. Right and, 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 and for me I don't I guess it's such a sticky situation because, for instance, I have a, an aunt who was a very successful businesswoman, and um, she's the one that actually taught me about entrepreneurship. And she said, you get a company, you build it up, and you sell it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that gives you more buying power to do something else with that. And for him to buy Essence, I feel like it gave him more leverage and more um, of a capability to, to do more for the black community because it is a black magazine it is targeted towards the black audience and he can now um i don't know like maybe put us or give us more information through essence magazine that about something that would help the black community mm -hmm. so i i think it helped it expand but devil's Shame advocate Roger? like how has essence magazine changed since he has you know, taking his position. It's still right. they're still doing the same things, publishing the same things, still doing the essence what Fest. Essence Fest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well it, Essence Fest is what has saved them. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see how the festival itself expands because the magazine itself, you're right, is the same. And they're yeah. digital now yeah. too. They're yeah. not, exactly. it's not even a, a magazine yeah. anymore. Right. And yeah. they have the podcast, I know. Yeah, but they do. I, I my major concern is the quality of the Shame Moisture. It products, the quality has you changed. Know? Um, because at the end of the day, 
I agree with your aunt. I've heard this notion before about selling for for buying larger buying power mm -hmm. and a little bit more leverage in the black community in general. Um, but what I loved about Shea Moisture was the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. And if it's being watered down or diluted in any way to sell more mm -hmm. um, and to have all of these new programming that they're doing monthly, that's the part that concerns me the most is mm -hmm. the quality of the product. And particularly, you know, Rich Alou's story is so beautiful that he was out on the street. On the street Harlem, corner, yes. And going back to his apartment and making Leaking, the products. Yep. That yep. is so beautiful and made me want to support it. And so now that it's this big business with products that are not necessarily as great for the African for African American hair is what concerns me yeah. the most. Yeah. But this is such a great discussion. Thank you all so much for your wonderful insight. I don't really I'm so on the fence, but it was yeah. so such an intriguing conversation. If you all enjoy the conversation, or if you have your own opinion about it, definitely let us know. What do you think? Did he sell out? Um, is Shea Moisture for us anymore? Who knows? But definitely stay tuned for the next segment.